Hi, I'm Dan Lagani with Silver Solutions, the senior focused home services company. Welcome to a new episode of AgeWise. Our goal with every episode is to make you smarter about something that you'll need to know as you and your loved ones grow older. Today, we've got a two part series that we're kicking off part one on longevity, the fountain of youth and the holy grail that everybody seems to be looking for. There is no better expert to help us with the topic than the guest we sat down with a couple of weeks back, Dr. Nir Barzilai. Dr. Barzilai is the founding director of the Institute of Aging for the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. He's also the scientific director for AFAR, the American Federation of Aging Research. And he's the author of a wonderful book called Age Later. In this first series, that's two parts, we sit down with Dr. Barzilai and get into all of the work that's happening as we speak on advancing not only your lifespan, but what he likes to call your health span. So sit back and enjoy the episode. You've got so many impressive descriptions of your career, but in your own words, how do you describe what you do and what you're focused on today? Well, well first of all, my resume is like that because I'm old. You know, if you, if you live alone, you get the long re resume. You know that. Um, I'm a geroscientist, okay? I'm a geroscientist. And the reason I'm a geroscientist, the reason I'm a scientist is that when I was a, a boy, when I was 13 years old, and I looked at my grandfather, who was my age now, and he looked quite different. He was obese and slow and sick. I thought, just a minute, you, you, what, what, hap what happened to him? Where did he come from? Uh, most of us don't see our grandparents and say, oh, we're going to look the same. They assume that I don't know what happened to them. And I think this curiosity has led me to, uh, uh, to be a scientist and to be a scientist that involved in this new field that's called geroscience that really says, hey, the biggest problem that we have is aging because aging is what drives the diseases, diabetes and Alzheimer and cancer and cardiovascular disease. So if that drives the disease, maybe if we can target aging, then we don't take rid of one disease, but all of them. It's a really fascinating comment to get underway with. And in fact, ironically, I think it was also in the first chapter of your book, Age Later, which is, are there systemic issues with the medical system, which seems to focus on specific diseases or specific indications, rather than a more holistic look at why are people getting sick and what are the causes? So how did you develop that orientation to looking holistically at aging versus a specific issue of cancer or diabetes? Right. And, 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 and by the way, uh, this morning I spent time on advising people not to form a new medical school, but to form a new health school, okay? Let's change it totally. Look, uh, during human evolution, life expectancy, it's, we're talking 100,000 years or so, life expectancy was 20 to 30 years. And it's only in the last 150 years that we made a huge progress and tripled our lifespan. But what did we get? We get diseases that haven't been there during human evolution. You know, people didn't live long enough to get Alzheimer's or cancer, or, you know, they died from other things. A lot of what was done was prevention, harnessing agriculture, cleaning the water, um, be building sewers, and, and vaccination. Those have been done. And uh, we got stuck at... Uh, in age 60, getting one disease and the treatment and another disease and a treatment and the treatments are antagonistic and the diseases are painful. And, and we discovered this new biology of aging that is now a target because we know one thing, we know that aging can be targeted, aging can be delayed, aging in several ways can be stopped and, re and reversed. And this is what we're trying to do in our initiatives. So in your view, are there people that are born hitting the genetic lottery, they're predisposed to living longer, and others that 
just don't have the same makeup. So therefore, we get what we get. Or can you really modulate the effects of aging? And if so, is it about environment? Is it about behavior? Is it about medicine or some, some mix of all of the above? So the right answer, if it was a test or in for geriatrician, would be that it's 80% the environment and 20% the genes. This is really not quite true, and it doesn't take into effect that our environment interacts through our gene, okay? Our nutrition interacts through our, through our genes. So it's not that we can send 20% here and 80% there. And since they're interacting with each other, let's say that it's really only 20% genetics. If we can understand what's the genetics and target it, maybe the environment is not going to be so harmful for us. But more important, we looked for a population where maybe it's 80% genetics and 20% uh, environment. That's what we are hoping for. And that's why we started looking at centenarians. And, and that's why we got so much knowledge and practical knowledge and drug development that we decided that this is going to be a better part of our future to understand what is that slows the aging in 100 years old. Let's find those factors and let's develop drugs that will allow us to get to our maximal potential as, as humans. You use a concept in your book, and I've heard you speak to it uh, in, in other arenas as well, of a lifespan versus a health span. Address that because I think it's relevant to what happens in that 40 year period. So, you know, I was interested in aging, right? <laughs> and I was a, a weird bird in this way. I'm, I'm one of the first uh, people that was interested in aging. And I told my family, I told my friends, I'm interested in the biology of aging. And people were like, well, you know, we don't want to hear about aging basically. But then I was studying actually centenarians and healthy centenarians. And I said, I'm looking into, into longevity. And it's interesting because people assumed that longevity means you get your disease whenever you get your disease in your 60s, and now you're sick for longer. And that's when I realized that what I'm doing and what's important for people is not how long they live, but how long they live without diseases, or in other words, health span, uh, what, what we call health span. And this is really, for me, the buzzword. This is also a buzzword that helps us with the FDA, help us explain to people, uh, because longevity or aging sounds like maybe that's not the right solution. Sitting here in 2023, is the work about slowing the aging process or actually reversing aging? What, what are we capable of today? There's no or, or, it's end, end. So, so let me tell you there, really, I, I would say there are three things that we're trying to do. One of them is the Dorian Gray scenario, right? Dorian Gray stopped aging. When he looked at the mirror, he saw his right, a, uh, right age. Uh, I'm also, I'm looking now at my picture in the Zoom and I'm saying I'm much younger. I'm just a Dorian Gray, right? And there are several drugs that can do that, that are already FDA approved and we need to repurpose them to target age. That's one scenario. A second scenario is, let's call it the Wolverine or the fountain of youth. How do we take an old person and we make it, make it young again? I think it's very difficult, but... Certainly, we can take an old body and make it healthier. Even if we don't extend much the lifespan, we can make it healthier. And we can do it by two examples that are, are very much part of, his, of our scientific uh, uh, journey. One is targeting what's called senescent cell or those zombie cells that are accumulating in our body and are causing harm. And there's a whole development of drugs and testing of drugs that can do that 
and can improve function of variety of organs and overall health. And the second thing that is happening in the, in the lab is creating regenerations of organ, you know? So if, if your liver is the one that's failing ahead of every, every, everything else, maybe we can regenerate your liver and, and then you'll have several more years. And if it's your brain, we'll regenerate your brain. So regenerative medicine is, is a very active part of what we're developing. The third scenario is the Peter Pan scenario. And I actually think this will be the easiest thing, but it's 50 years away. It's taking you when you're 20 and giving you a treatment and repeating the treatment every few months or every year so you don't, go, you don't get older. There's already proof of concept of that, at least organ specific, that we can erase aging and we can uh, re rejuvenate a tissue. So all those things are working in parallel. There's urgency for, you know, to start approving drugs that will target what we can do and get our health spin going. But there's also need to do the fountains of youth and, and the Peter Pan, uh, and they'll come together. Uh, maybe not for you and me then, but they'll come together. So to that point, I, I wonder if there are people that will hear this and think, I don't have to worry about diet and exercise because there's going to be medicine that addresses all of those issues for me. Do you subscribe to that or do you have a perspective that the behavioral change still actually matters? I, I think uh, our interaction with the environment matters a lot. And anyone should do a exercise a concern about the diet, we can be more or less specific about it, sleep and have social interaction. If you can check out those and if you can try to improve it, you know, if you walk 7,000 steps a day, what about going to 10,000? Let's maximize our health. The same is if our LDL cholesterol is 100, it's okay, but you know, 70 is better. So maximizing our health by exercise, by uh, dieting, mainly not being obese, but there are things that are specific for aging about diet and sleeping as much as we can and social interaction is going to get us much above the age of 80 or the majority of us. So absolutely important. That concludes part one of a special two-part conversation on longevity with our guest, Dr. Nir Barzilai. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Coming up in episode two, we take a look at metformin the TAME trials that Dr. Barzilai is involved with and whether metformin is a miracle drug and right for everybody. We also talk about the American Federation of Aging Research and his role as scientific director. A lot more rich content to be posted. If you enjoyed this first part conversation, share it with a friend. If you want to see every episode of AgeWise, you can go to silversolutions.com and click on the video tab. See all the episodes right there at your fingertips. And of course, you can subscribe on the Apple Podcast platform so you get every episode as soon as it's released. I'm Dan Lagani. For all of us here at Silver Solutions who work hard every day to make certain that you can live better, longer, thanks so much for joining us. Stay safe and be wise. <music>